Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Check the link down below for one free month. And absolutely phenomenal. So we do have a floating noodle. Finally, we have series two, wave two of Miniverse Make It Mini Foods, the mystery box of a crafting kit. As you can see, we have 12 Miniverse Make It Mini Foods mystery boxes that contain a DIY project with resin where you get tiny ingredients and you can make miniature foods with them. In previous videos, we've done everything everything from Miniverse Lifestyles, where we made tiny aquariums, Miniverse Foods, Again, the ingredients are absolutely adorable and half the fun is just discovering the tiny items. We've even done a miniverse kitchen. So if you want to watch any of these videos, I will link them down below. These products are coming out pretty hot. We've done the Halloween version. We've also done the Christmas version. So I'm always pretty excited to review these with you grains. Let me know in the comment section below what kind of miniature foods would you like to see in these kits? And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and click on all notifications while you're there because that will turn you into a grain of salt in the salt shaker family. What's this? Don't worry. It's just a sharp. No, 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 no. Don't worry about it. I got you. By the way, my newest craft kit is now available. If you ever wanted to make your own custom figure in an acrylic pour style, we have you covered. Ever since I did that project with my sister, I was extremely obsessed with wanting to make more of these. And so that's why we have the Figure It Out box. Figure it out. Figure it out. With this kit, you can make your very own custom bear or any other creature with the air dry clay that comes inside. And yes, this kit does include everything you need, including six mini bears that you can use as charms or keychains, close to a liter of paint with eight different colors, and a total of over 14 items in the box. If you want the full detailed video, I will link it down below, but also something else amazing in there. With every box, you're going to be getting a pack of mystery stickers that we put together with bear puns for this kit. There are 10 stickers to collect, in which one of them is holographic, and if you're one of the lucky three to get a golden card, you'll get the chance to be one of the VIPs in live streams, and you get to choose one of the vlogs that I can make on my vlog channel if you want me to craft something different, or if you want me to review a local restaurant, or anything of that sort, of course. But I have to say I'm really excited about this kit, and I can't wait to see what you all make. Of course, with every box, you will be getting tutorials of how to use the items in there. Again, the link will be in the description box below. Thank you, Grain, so much for supporting me throughout all the projects. Back to the regular program. And so the goal for today is to be able to at least find four different projects. Since these are mystery boxes, we don't know what we're going to get or if we're going to be able to get a variety. However, there are 18 to collect. And as you can see, it ranges anything from pizza, I'm guessing this is ice cream or popcorn, pies, cakes, and even the front of the box shows us an entire ramen. But we're gonna see the full list of what's inside once we open them. Now make no mistake, this is not a cheap craft. Especially here in Canada, they're a little bit more difficult to get, especially near the beginning of the release. And so for all of them, I paid about $290. Yes, for miniature projects and foods. But this definitely helps me be able to gauge whether this is worth your cash or if it goes. In the trench. So the goal for today is to try and do at least three to four projects. All right, without further delay, let's go ahead and move all of them to the side over here because I just need to make some space. Let's see what the first one offers us again. This is series two, wave two. There are two waves. There was wave one where there was some of the items that were kind of silhouetted out. And we have both the diner and cafe series. This one's the diner series. All right, let's, let's get you opened up. If anyone from Miniverse is watching this, please make this tab a little bigger because this is so tiny that I eventually either way have to hold this part to open it. I have to use a sharp pointy thing. All right, will you open properly? All right, let's just go in manually. Next one here. I'm really curious what's in the entire collection. I try not to get any spoilers for myself. And you? Wonderful. Good. Let's hear that pop. Very nice. And we have one, two, and we have some instructions. Three, four, five, six surprises. We do have a stand to display our actual mini food. And we'll put this ball aside. Now, if you like to follow instructions, you definitely can by scanning any of these QR codes, but that's not what I'm about. I am a professional. I know exactly what I'm doing most times. The other times I just kind of see where things take me. And we do have, oh, we do have, oh. 
We do have this really cute mat. This is making me think we might have the ramen. It says itadakimasu, which means bon appetit, I guess, or thank you for the meal, something like that. I mean, you could watch me and my friend do itadakimasu in his video over here. So if you want to watch Junk Food Japan, definitely check out his video. And here it says ichi ni san, which in Japanese ichi means one, ni means two. San is supposed to be S-A-N for three, but they did it with sun because that's the branding of the miniverse. It's, a, it's an actual sun emblem. I'm really excited. I can't wait to see what we're getting. I hope it's the ramen, but let's go ahead and see what actually is in this guide. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Oh my What the heck? Look at all this. All right, so let's start from over here. It looks like we can get anything from a tiramisu, berry cake. We can get little tarts, more different kinds of cakes. And then we're going into sundaes, which are really cute. I love the scoops ideas. What is that one? A unicorn sundae. I want a unicorn sundae. I do see a banana split. If we do get a banana split, I will probably skip it because we did do it in a previous video. If you want to watch that, I'll link it down below as well. But it looks like this set is really heavy on cakes. I'm not too keen on the cakes. And we do have pies. Again, some of them that we've done in previous video, we will skip. This is where we're getting more interesting. Here we have a ramen, tiny ravioli. I love ravioli. And then we have different kinds of pizza. I have to say I'm a little surprised there aren't any drinks. I'm guessing that's going to be for the cafe series, which I do have. So we're gonna look into that in the next video. I'm actually pretty excited about this because I still think that it is going to be the ramen, but let's open the, and see what we have. It says, keep cool. And we get, yes, yes, Ermi, I'm, I'm actually pretty excited. And not that you couldn't tell. We have ramen broth. Again, it says ichi san, which is really cute. This is what it looks like all the way around. It does say tiny stuff. Let's see what the non-nutritional facts say. It says bowls of fun, sunshine, and warm hugs. Made fresh. You are? What are you? My goodness, the noodles. I really wanna to touch them because I'm really curious on what the actual texture is like. I'm hoping they're gonna be kind of gummy-esque. Here's what the packet looks like. It says 100% instant. And this is what it, I'm in love. I'm absolutely in love with tiny red little ingredients and groceries. I'm a sucker for that. So we're gonna to touch this after. Let's just keep seeing what we get. You are our ramen bowl. Very cute. I can see the indents here. I'm guessing this is going to be for probably chopsticks. This is a nice looking bowl. Next, you are, what is that? Oh, furikake. This is kind of an interesting thing in Japan. I don't know how to explain it, but I guess the best way to say is seasoning, mostly for toppings like rice or in this case, ramen. And I really do like furikake. It comes in so many different flavors. You can get the traditional ones like egg flavor and just kind of sprinkle it on your rice to give it extra just taste. You can get like plum or vegetables. They even have ones shaped like Pokemon or Snoopy. And it's a good way for those of us who have chronic conditions. If you could only have rice today, you can add a little bit of that furikake on top and it just gives you extra flavor without having to worry about cooking more things or adding too much to it. And this one looks to be more like maybe seaweed and salt. There's something flat in this one and you are, ooh, the toppings. We have the soy eggs, which are one of my favorite things on a ramen. And then we have little Naruto's. Kitty editor, <coughs> could you please educate us on what a Naruto is? <coughs> no, no, kitty, hang on. Not this Naruto, not him, but these ones which means education time with Kitty. <laughs> and lastly over here, I'm guessing this is where our chopsticks and tongs are going to be. Yes, our tongs are here. We have the chopsticks. Oh my goodness, is that a tiny spoon? That is a tiny spoon. Oh my goodness. I love these spoons for soups. Oh my God. I'm Here's what it looks like. And here are the chopsticks. It says, enjoy. This is what the back looks like. And they are removable. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I am in love. I love this thing so much. And as always, we have the little tongs, which I usually don't end up using, but definitely please do use it. I do have dragon skin. So make sure you do follow any kind of safety instructions. This is resin, not for little ones. Resin is toxic. Salty Crafter, what are you doing? This is not how you do your kind of business and your side gig. You really need to learn some new skills. I guess this is the perfect time to let you grades know about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an absolutely amazing online learning community with thousands of online classes and members. 
I love the fact that Skillshare is a community because you never feel alone when you're learning something new. And so because there's other people, I personally start feeling more inspired to learn new skills and take next steps in my creative journeys. And I really do have so many different topics ranging from illustrations, graphic design, from photography to music, and everything in between. And it's a great way to feel connected also with the teachers. And the way the platform is designed is so that you have on-demand stackable lessons so you can start and finish at your own pace without anyone rushing you and no deadlines. And especially if you made yourself a promise to start a new side gig, this is a great opportunity to check out Skillshare. So you can learn how Marley Grace's newsletter grew to 28,000 subscribers, or even how YouTuber Asante leverages content creation and building an online presence, because I really do feel the wealth of knowledge in Skillshare can help you go from passion to paycheck. One of my favorite current obsessions is the class by Holly M. Colley, and it's called Your Creative Business, Build It, Brand It, Launch It. This is especially important for those of us who want to make a living as an artist. And I'm more really involved in the one called Build Your Dream Business, Craft Your Purpose and Online Presence by Isis Brianna. As a content creator, I'm always looking for new ways and strategies in order to improve myself. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to learn something new, whether for yourself, for a passion, or even as a side gig, why not check my link down below? And the first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Again, the link will be in the pinned comment as well as in the description box below. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring a portion of today's video. And let's go ahead and find our ramen over here and here's what it should in theory look like so we do have the chopsticks that go across the bowl the furikake does look a little out of place I would have loved to see either a piece of meat and if not a piece of meat then maybe some pickles because they really do love their pickles in Japan whether it be ginger pickles or just any kind of fermented veggie and these are basically what we got. Let's turn this around and see what the instructions are. So it says to put it about this much, add the noodles, harden it for five to 10 minutes, and then add more and then add the toppings. But I kind of want to see if I can level this up a little bit more and turn it into a frozen moment. And if you don't know what frozen moments are, we've done different kinds of frozen moments on this channel, especially when it comes to the cereal where we have our spoon just hanging out in the air. So I kind of want to see if I can do that with the chopsticks and get those floating in the air. Of course, hoping that they do give us enough broth because last time in the Christmas edition, I was very disappointed. They did not give us enough resin, which was very disappointing. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with resin, it's basically a liquid when hardened turns into a glassy plastic type look and you can do some really cool projects with it anything from huge projects like what Jazza had done or even tiny projects like I used to do way back when I was doing more crafting videos and the good thing about UV resin is yes you can use your sunlight but you can also use a UV light indoors which cures it much more quickly within about two ish minutes so for us this is going to be quick projects ish sometimes I like to complicate my life so let's check out what this texture is let's get our noodles opened up Voila. Oh my, oh my goodness. I did not expect them to just kind of rush out. These are the cutest tiny noodles ever. Let's see what the texture is like. A little on the bouncy side, so that's good. They're not too flexible, so we have to keep that in mind. And what I'm curious about is if we can get the chopsticks kind of holding on to one specific noodle, like a so, and then make that, oh my gosh. Oh no. <laughs> And then eventually, if we could do something like, I'm gonna have to, we're gonna have to use that resin, my goodness, and try to get that resin and that noodle kind of hovering up here. We're gonna figure this out. But first things first, let's go ahead and open our broth. Where's that tiny tape? There it is. So we have our tape. Let's get you. Come on, I don't have much nails. I got you. Voila. So the instructions do say to fill it up as much as possible. So we're gonna see how well this broth comes out. Cause I'm telling you the last time we had the drink in the holiday edition, it was absolutely terrible, but okay. Something's coming out, which is good. I feel like they really need to, especially I'm, I'm getting upset here, but I feel like they need to add more resin because that is the whole purpose of this kit is that we do need resin. That's the point. It's a resin project. Very nice. And I'm gonna stop over here because I feel like the noodles should take up a lot of space. And I think I want one of the longest noodles for the chopsticks. So we're gonna put this one aside because the other ones are kind of scrunched up. So I'm gonna take this one, put it aside, and we're gonna add the noodles in there. So hopefully they take up enough space. Let's squish that. Let's go this way, that way. We're doing good. Let's just make sure that they're all actually coated because we don't want no dry noodles and nobody like them dry noodles. Maybe actually that's not true. I do like dry noodles. <laughs> Especially if they're straight from the pack and you just eat it like a snack. You know what else is a snack? U-grains are a snack. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise, okay? Look at me. 
right, I feel like we need more of this. I don't want to use it all, but I'm going to go ahead and add just a smidge more. I think this is where it's going to be a little bit more tricky. I'm going to go ahead and hold this ramen noodle straight up like this. And I'm going to take my light and shine it right here in hopes that everything actually hardens in place and that my hand is just not in the way. And let's see what happens in two minutes. A few minutes later. And absolutely phenomenal. So we do have a floating noodle. Part of me wants to take this a little further and see if I can get the noodle to be even longer by putting more UV resin and getting these to kind of interlock. Is that too ambitious? Maybe. Is that gonna stop me? No. I'm gonna just coat this one with a good bit of resin. I'm really hoping there's going to be enough. And I'm gonna try and interlock this like a so. Let's see if this works. Then we're just gonna have more noodle and more height. I don't know if I'm being too ambitious here, but you know what? There's only one way to find out. Listen, I don't always compliment myself, but I think I am an absolute genius. Look at what we have. We have a super noodly top, which is going to be absolutely phenomenal for when we put the chopsticks. My biggest concern right now is to make sure that the noodles can actually hold the weight of the chopsticks, but we'll get there when we get there, which is pretty soon. And in order to do that, we're going to have to stop the noodles from becoming too flexible. So I think what we need to do is actually coat the noodles in more resin so they become a lot more stiff, a lot more stable, especially at the base over here. So we're just gonna kind of let the resin trickle down and get it to be a lot more more, there we go, more coated. That's going to help us with the stability. I'm just making things up as I go because I'm a professional. There you go. All right, now we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to dunk the chopstick in the resin and I'm going to place them on either side of the noodle, but not at the same time because I think that's going to be a little too complicated. So I'm gonna try and get here. I don't know, I really don't know if this is going to work, but let's try. We're just gonna sit here and wait for two minutes. I am still as a fox. No, the fox are not still. I am still. And so here it is, it definitely worked, and we're going to do the exact same thing, but with the other chopstick, and I want to make sure that it comes in at a V and not too narrow, kind of just to show that there's movement. Oh my goodness, this is looking absolutely phenomenal. Now, the only thing left to do is basically decorate it with the rest of the stuff, like the soy eggs, the Naruto, and the furikake. I figured I would place them in the same way that I normally would see them, which is like, they're just kind of bunched up in little categories. And it me good. How absolutely adorable is this frozen moment ramen? I really, really actually wanted the ramen. So the fact that we got it first made me actually put more effort into it because I want to do it justice. I don't just want a thing. I really want a thing. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like maybe I want it. I'm okay with it. No, I, I, I needed this in my life. Let me know what you think. And also let me know what you would have done differently. But right now, project number two. And let's see this. Nice. By the way, don't think I'm not doing this off camera. I am doing this off camera. I am just slicing into these. And the pop, very low. We have one, two. Let's see, do we get a different kind of mat? I don't see the mat just yet. That's usually a giveaway of what we're gonna get. Three, four, five, six. So I don't see a mat anywhere. We still have the stand and no hints whatsoever on what's in here. So let's go ahead and open. This one's pretty flat. I'm guessing it's a plate. Ooh. Oh, a pizza. That's the other thing I really wanted. Oh my God. Urgh. Today, Miniverse giveth. So we have Sunny Bros pizza crusts. Oh my god. And there's shading at the bottom. It says feeling lazy, call 555-za, order now. And then the non-nutritional facts say sauciness, pizzazz, vitamin yum, and total fun. All right, we'll open this later. Let's see what else we get. Because in theory, I think there's a couple of different kinds of pizzas. So let's see which ones we have. And you? What are you? What is that? Okay, we have the pizza paddle, kind of like wood oven pizza type. This one here is a little chunky, so I'm gonna guess this is a tomato sauce. And it is cheese. So we have a cheese sauce over here. I didn't think the cheese would be a sauce. I thought maybe it would be kind of like soft sprinkles, maybe. Let's see what's under here. Nope. Oh, we do seem to have non-nutritional facts. What does it say? It's really tiny. Kitty editor, you're gonna have to zoom in extra. But it says cheesiness, meltiness, and total fun. I'm actually really surprised. I didn't think the cheese would be a liquid, but okay. Next one here. What are you? Basil. We have basil leaves. Next tiny item. Oh, what are you? Tomatoes. We have tiny tomato slices. So this is basically a margarita, I think. 
kind of want to take a closer look at the tomato slices. I love the fact that they actually have the tiny details to make it look like tomato slices. Now I'm kind of curious on the leaves. Some leaves are actually just one leaf and some of them are two leaved. I'm curious to see what that's supposed to look like. And then here we have utensil. What are you? <gasps> no way, a pizza cutter. That's cool. And of course the tongs. All right, so let's go ahead and find our pizza. Found it. Aha. And it looks like I am right. This is a margarita pizza, which is basically tomato and basil. So it looks like the basil with the double leaf is kind of in the middle and everything else is just kind of spread. And the instructions are pretty straightforward. We're basically just putting the cheese, putting the toppings and hardening it up. A big part of me kind of wants to see if I can make this a little bit more elevated with another frozen moment. But let's first see what the crust is about. All right, crust, let's see what you got. And voila, the shading on this piece is absolutely phenomenal. Look at that. This is also a flexible piece. We have some tomato sauce right on here. So I guess the goal is to not cover the entire base. Otherwise you won't see too much of it, but I'm loving this. I'm loving the shading. And of course the idea is to make sure that the pizza can go on top here. My biggest sadness at this point is that we don't have a scoop to make it so that the pizza can be scooped up, but I am tempted to cut a piece with my scissors to make a slice. Either that, or I can just kind of make this cutter a frozen moment itself by cutting an indent. There are options, and I, I need a moment to think. I think we'll go simple on this one with the actual cutter, and then the next time we get a pizza, I will frozen moment that one. So let's check out our cheese. Can I open it? Yes. Voila. Oh, she is thick. Do we have anything to spread it with? I don't think they gave us anything to spread it with. So I guess I'm gonna use this because this is thick. Look at this. She is thick. My goodness. Did they seriously not give us a spoon? Give me a second. So it looks like we did not get anything to spread it with, but I do have this thing here from the Christmas holiday version that I kind of kept. I am a little bit of a crafty hoarder. So we're gonna use this one to spread the cheese. It's just, that's all I have right now. But before I do that, I need to know where my slice is gonna go. I think I want this to go here. So we're gonna take my cutter and we're gonna try and make a little bit of an indent. Cut out a little piece, voila. I'm gonna nudge you in. Is that enough space? Do you need more space? You do need more space. By the way, I got something a little concerning because I was just kind of cleaning off a little bit of resin from on top of here. But look at my napkin, it is clean. But as soon as I start rubbing the material, it's a little hard to see. Let me show you the other side. There are pieces of the red right here that are kind of coming off. So I'm not sure if the paint is supposed to rub off or if there's something else that I should know about. This better not be lead based, but some of the red paint is rubbing off. Better not be lead, this better not be lead. All right, we're gonna scoop the cheese. Let's see that again. Pretty basic. Just kind of spread that stuff. So we're gonna spread that stuff like a so. We can't go too thin because otherwise I feel like this is going to go too translucent. So let's get a little goopy, a little extra goopy. Like a so. Oh my goodness, she is thick. Voila. Yeah, they definitely needed to give us something. Yeah, we're not going thin here. For one of the rare times, we actually have a lot of cheese, a lot of resin. So we're just not gonna, we're not gonna go cheap here. That's looking great. Absolutely phenomenal. Part of me regrets I'm not making this into a frozen moment, but there's three different kinds of pizzas. So we're just gonna have to wait and make sure that we do make a proper frozen moment pizza. There, I think that's pretty good. Now for the tomatoes, this picture shows that five should fit comfortably. So let's go ahead and put five. There goes one. I may have spaced them out a little too much. Four, let's move you over here. And and a fifth one right there. Listen, pizza toppings are not symmetrical, okay? Don't get angry at me. <laughs> Gonna move them around a little bit. Let's take our basils and let's start with the double leaves, which is this one. I'm gonna put you right in the middle, kind of in the middle, more or less in the middle. Now let's just take some leaves and put them in between, but I don't want them to look like we did this on purpose. So it's just gonna kind of float like this. Voila, that looks cute. Now let's put it in the oven. Voila. A few minutes later. And here is our pizza so far, but we are missing the pizza cutter. I'm cheating a little bit on this one because I'm going to be dipping the pizza slicer in the ramen broth. And we're going to harden that one in the crevice that I made. And our pizza is looking absolutely adorable. This is probably one of the most basic pizzas we can get in this kit because there are other ones with different ingredients. So I'm looking forward to seeing those as well. But I think adding those extra frozen moments moments makes this even more special and more custom to you. Let's see what we get in number three. You know what? We'll just take it, what do we have? Let's open it up. 
All right, let's get rid of those instructions because we ain't about that life and nobody tells us what to do and how to do it. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six surprises. It feels like it could be another pizza, but let's see. If we have doubles, we'll skip for this one and we'll do it in the next video. Yes, even if it's a pizza. I feel like it's a pizza. I think it's a pizza. Hang on, we're gonna, we're gonna hunt for the, see, this is a pizza. It's really soft, it's round. Let's see what actual material we get inside. And mushrooms. Mushrooms and green peppers. Oh my God. Okay, I want to keep this for a frozen moment. So we're gonna do this in the next video. So I'm just gonna save, I'm just gonna save them all in here. And I promise we'll do a frozen moment in uh, the pizza. Okay, just bear with me here. So let's see what's in this one. Don't be another pizza. I didn't think I would say this, but I don't want another pizza. All right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six surprises. We have a doily, which means it's a different project. Off with the instructions. And of course we have our display stand. Very cute. And let's see what we get. This one's pretty chunky. Oh, what the heck happened here? It's like someone chewed it. Where's the rest of the paper? This one was really chewed. Okay, what are you? What are you? <gasps> what? A tiered cake. That's neat. So it looks like we have a strawberry based tiered cake. Let's see what this one looks like up close. And you are, it has the texture and feel of an eraser and it has some good texture too. If we look closer, we can see that there's little texture on the cake itself. I have to say though, the box that it comes in is absolutely adorable. It's party cake. This next item is pretty chunky. What are you? Oh, the glaze. And we even have a nozzle. So I'm guessing this is a chocolate glaze. This is what it looks like. Let's see what the non-nutritional facts say. I love tiny details. And it says sunshine, vitamin fun, and total smiles. Kind of corny, but it's cute. I like corny. I've never hidden that. I am both sappy, corny, and I cry at Disney movies. I am a very sensitive little bean. But okay, I'm excited to see what this is going to look like. Strawberry chocolate, yes please. Next item is... Okay, we have another stand. So you can put your stand on a stand. What are you? And you are, it's gonna be sprinkles, isn't it? Yep, we have strawberry type sprinkles. So this is going to be really chocolatey and strawberry-y. One of the other good things with strawberry is banana. Just say it. I've been getting really obsessed with my freeze dryer and I made freeze dried bananas. And they're just so good. Next here. UV, oh, whipped cream. Now I'm curious what color the whipped cream is. They're pink, they're tiny little pink dollops. And last but not least, I'm guessing this is, there you go, we have a cake thing. See, this is what I wanted for the pizza. So I think I might save this for a future pizza because I wanna do a frozen moment with this in hand. Now we have it, so we can do the next project next time. I'm just gonna shove it in here so I don't lose it. There, because I tend to lose things. Got it. And of course we have the tongs. Tongs? They are tongs. All right, let's find our cake mix, our party cake. Found it. And so according to the paper, this is called a choco strawberry cake. And it's basically a tiered cake with drizzle on top and bottom. And just the decorations kind of hanging out. Let's see the instructions in the back. And yeah, it's, it's a one it's a one layer kind of thing. But I'm going to do it in two layers just because I don't want the droopies to be too droopy. So we're gonna start with the bottom and then make our way to the top. And I don't know how I can turn this into a frozen moment, but if you have ideas that let me know in the comments below. So that next time if we do get a cake like this, how do we frozen moment it? Let's take a look at our chocolate glaze and she is thick let's add that nozzle right on top and so the first thing I'm trying to do is really to put that resin around the first layer and I do want it to get droopy but for some reason I'm having a bit of a hard time after curing it because there's just not enough of the drizzle and I have to say as cute as the cake itself is and the box of the cake this project is an absolute nightmare I hate it in so many different ways it just feels botched I guess and it's not offering too much freedom for creativity. But alas, here is everything that we did today. Let me know which one of the three is your favorite. I clearly am very biased because I love the ramen. It just looks absolutely majestic and flowy and fun and the pizza looks great. The cake really is for me an absolute trash. If you want to watch more crafting videos, make sure you click up here. If you want to watch something a little different, make sure you click down here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.